Okay, for uh, this question, um, I'd like to discuss a very simple approach to tackle these kind of questions. Uh, now, for this particular question, you need to know the relationship between the volume, the radius, and the height of the cylinder. I hope everybody is aware of the very basic concept. So the volume of a cylinder is given by pi r square into h, right? Now, uh, the, the simple idea that I'm going to discuss, it is very effective in terms of these percentage type of questions. Um, if you think about the values here, so if I, if I think about the values of the volume, the radius, the height and everything. So if I think about the values, I need to input, so there's an equal to sign, this is no column at all. Uh, I need to know each of these values to get this value or in terms of a pi is a constant, we already know the value of pi, but for a specific volume, a specific radius, a specific height, a uh, couple of things has to be known to get the third one, right? But the same relationship can also be used if we think everything in terms of times. So if I think the volume is this many times of the previous volume, the radius is this many times of the previous radius, the height is this many times of the previous height, this same relationship will hold true. And the interesting part is, because pi is constant, now this part is constant. When we deal with times, this pi will always be one time of itself. So this is irrelevant. So we don't care about this. So using this idea, let us uh, try to solve this question. It's a very simple question. It says that the cylindrical container contains 20% more water. So initially there's a cylinder which is filled to the brim of, with water and a new cylindrical container has 20 per, can, can hold 20% more water. So the volume is 1.2 times of the previous volume. So we can say that the volume here is 1.2 times of the previous volume, right? Let's put the equal sign. I don't care about the pi anymore. How many times of the radius of the old container should the radius of the new container be? So we, we are basically looking for this part. This is unknown to us, the radius square or something, how many times that becomes such that the height of the new container is less than the height of the old container by 40%. So if the height of the new container is less than the previous height by 40%, so the new height is 60% of the previous container. So effectively the height is 0.6 times of the previous. So we have a relationship like this, right? In terms of times, everything. So volume is 1.2 times. This is not known to us into 0.6 should be equal to this 1.2, right? So this is the R square. So R square should be how much? You just look at look at this and you can figure it out mentally, right? So R. Okay, uh, before I start uh, discussing the solution to this particular question, uh, let us uh, just briefly run through a very basic idea. This kind of idea is very helpful in ratio and percentage type of questions. Um, so if you think about uh, CP to SP, so I'm just taking a random value here, not even a values, a random profit percentage value. So let's say uh, there's a profit percentage of 10% involved. So from CP to SP, the value grows by 10%, right? Uh, we, can, we can do the same thing in terms of times also. So we can say that the CP to SP, the, it becomes 1.1 times. So if the CP was uh, 100 rupees, then the SP would be 110 rupees. So this is a very easy example to understand as well, right? But notice something, had the CP been uh, 200, if this is fixed profit percentage, so if the profit percentage is again 10%, uh, the, the SP would be again 1.1 times of this 200, right? So the SP would be 220. So the CP is doubling, the SP is also doubling, right? So if the profit percentage remains constant, then uh, if the CP is doubled, the SP is also doubled, right? Not only that, uh, if I consider it in this way, that CP, SP and the profit, the profit is the profit by mean, I, uh, I don't mean the profit percentage, I mean the profit value. So the profit is basically SP minus CP, right? So if I have CP as 100, the SP was 110 and the profit was 10 rupees. If the CP is 200, 
the SP is 220 and the profit is 20. So again, uh, this is keeping in mind that the profit percentage is kept constant. So whatever be the CPSP value, the profit percentage is kept constant. So you can see this, the CP doubles, the SP doubles, obviously the difference of SP and CP should also double, right? So the profit also doubles. Um, you can take an arbitrary thing, something like SP plus CP. Uh, this is actually nothing, but you can just take an arbitrary thing. So in the first scenario, CP plus SP is uh, 210. And the second scenario, the CP plus SP is 420. So that is also doubling, right? So this is this is a basic idea that we are going to use in this question. This question is, uh, can be solved very fast if you understand this idea, I mean, this basic idea. So let us now understand how to utilize this idea in this actual question. Okay, this idea, let's let's utilize this idea in this question now. So uh, we have been mentioned that uh, the cost price of an article is increased by 18% and uh, he maintained the same profit percentage. So if he maintains the same profit percentage, if there's an increase of 18% in the cost price, this should automatically imply that there's an increase of 18% in the profit also, in the SP also, in the, uh, I mean, whatever thing you're dealing with. So uh, because profit is SP minus CP, you are maintaining the same profit percentage. So the profit should also grow by 18%. This is what we uh, actually looked at in the previous uh, basic idea. So if the profit you obtained was nine rupees more, so what is this nine rupees more? This is the increase in the profit value. This is actual increase, right? So this 18%, of the initial profit should be equivalent to nine rupees. So now you can calculate the initial profit in whichever way you like to do that. So initial profit, you know, the basic way would be nine into hundred by 18. Or if you want to do this mentally, 18% corresponds to nine rupees. So 2% corresponds to one rupee or hundred percent corresponds to 50 rupees. So whichever way this is also coming out to be 50 rupees. So that is the answer here. So answer is rupees 50. I hope that was clear to all of you. Thank you. Um, for this question, people tend to uh, get into too much of calculation, then make silly mistakes in those calculations. Um, it's a, on, on the face of it, this is a very easy question. It's a verbose question, but it's not a very tough question. Uh, these type of questions are too much prevalent in CAT nowadays. I mean, you have a lot of data and uh, you have to just calculate this and figure it out. Uh, but then uh, the point is how to simplify your calculation in these kind of cases. So uh, let's go ahead with reading the question one. So uh, how, how you interpret the question that is also important in these types. So, uh, okay, so Rama had bought a stock of goods worth rupees 50,000. Now he sells 10% of the goods at certain profit, 40% uh, of the goods at another certain profit. 25% of the goods were damaged by fire, so he cannot sell that, so that's a complete loss. And the remaining goods were sold back to the company at a certain loss percentage. So we know the distribution of the various uh, part of the money, so that 50,000 that he has actually spent on buying the goods, uh, the percentage part of those 50,000, whatever profit or loss has been incurred on each part, right? So initially in these kind of cases, uh, my recommendation would be just start with a very basic value. So let's start with 100 rupees. So instead of having 50,000 as the total value, uh, we are assuming that the total value is 100 rupees. This can be done without this assumption also, but the last part would be relevant for this. So uh, I'll come to that in a while. So if I assume that the total good was worth 50,000, so now you will easily able to understand this. 10% of the good is worth rupees 10, right? And that is generating 15% profit implies there's a 1.5 rupee profit on it. The 40% of the good is 40 rupees. That generates 10% profit. So there's a four rupee profit on that. 25% of the goods, so that is 25 bucks, entire damage. So you don't sell it at all. So there's a full amount of loss, right? So there's a 25 rupees loss from here and the remaining part. So this is 50, this is 25. So you're left with another 25. So the remaining 25, you sell it at a loss of 10%. So that's a 2.5 loss. Now you can check that this and this gives us a minus one and that is minus 26 plus four is minus 22. 
So had the question been, what is the percentage loss that he incurs? You already have the answer. See, the 50,000 is not relevant anymore in this case. So the answer is 22% because if the good worth rupees, I mean, if the total goods were worth rupees 100 rupees, you have a 22 rupees loss. So that, in, uh, that implies as a 22% loss. Uh, but in this case, you have 50,000, so simple. So you just uh, scale it. You're, you're actually scaling the initial total worth by 500. So you need to scale the loss value and every value here by 500. So you're getting what, 11,000 here? So that's the answer for this question. So the answer is a loss of 11,000 rupees. So that's it for this question. It's that simple, but uh, just uh, try to simplify your calculation. Do not uh, make, uh, I mean, do not hurry while reading the question. Um, it's a very easy one if you just read it properly and don't do silly errors. That's it. Um, this is a very interesting question. Uh, these types of question, uh, people tend to do it in a very long method. I mean, there are very long methods and there are long methods also, uh, but I, I'll just try to understand from the objective here. So uh, my motive in these kind of questions are always, uh, what are we actually looking for? I'll, I'll just focus on that part and automatically I'll be calculating less and you know, using the simplest process possible. So uh, let's read the question once. So there's a mixture of liquids A and B containing 70% of B by volume. So I know that uh, what percent is B, so obviously what percent is A. Liquid C is added till the final solution contained 12% by volume of A. So uh, when I'm reading this question, I, I uh, there, there might I mean, when when somebody else who is not experienced in these type of questions, when they will be reading this question, they might get confused here as to I mean what volume of C are we adding? So let us assume that to be some X. That is a very long approach. But if you think about it in this way, when you're adding the liquid C and you know that the final solution must contain 12% by volume of A. So it the final solution should have 12% of A in it. So automatically we should be able to understand that we can figure out the percentage of B as well. Because think about it, if we are adding C, to the volume, the ratio of A is to B should not change, right? Because we do not change the volume of A, we do not change the volume of B. So the ratio of A is to B should remain constant. So let us use that. Now we have A and B to begin with, 70% was B, so 30% should have been A. So we have initially three is to seven. So this should also be the final ratio of A and B. So the finally, whatever mixture we have of A, B, C, in that as well, the A and B part should be in the ratio three to seven. But let us do the final thing in terms of percentage so that we can evaluate the percentage of C also. We know that A is 12% in it, that corresponds to three parts. So the seven parts should also correspond to 28% just scaling by the same factor of four. So if this is 12% and this is 20%, what about C then? Sorry for that, yeah. So A is 12% and B is 28%, so that's a total of 40%. So C should be 60%. So this is the final composition of the mixture or the final mixture. So what is the ratio of B to C in the final mixture? That is what we are looking for. So B to C is 28% and 60%. That is in the ratio seven is to 15. So that is the answer for this question. So I hope that was simple enough. Very easy question. Just keep the objective in mind. So whatever you know, try to target that part rather than hitting on the unknown because whenever you hit on the unknown, you're bound to take variables because that is not known to you. If you hit on the known bit, you can use the information itself to get the answer. So that's it for this question. Thank you. Okay, so out of the 10 questions that we have for this event, this is the easiest of the lot, I believe. Uh, so you have on the opening ceremony of a bakery, Raju sold chocolate cake at a profit of 20%. After a few days, he gets a 10% discount on its ingredients. Uh, so making the cost price reduced by 10%. 
but even then he decides to sell it at rupees 18 more than the previous selling price so we know the difference of the two selling prices the initial selling price and the final selling price uh making him a gain of 40% so uh, these are the exact data that we have now whenever there are too many data related to percentages and some data related to actual value so this rupees 18 would be the actual value uh i will always in, uh, intend to use the percentage values or the ratio values initially and then i will use some scaling factor to get it uh, i mean to match with the exact data so uh, just to explain with the this this question itself so let us assume that uh, the initial cost price was 100 bucks so initially he he had a cost price of 100 so there is a profit of 20% implying the selling price should be 120 very simple to do now there's a 10% discount on the ingredients so the, uh, the this is the initial part by the way uh so finally or later the cost price reduces by 10% so the cost price becomes 90 now we also know there's a 40% gain involved finally right so if there's a 40% gain involved so you have a 36 rupees gain on this 90 so you're selling it at 126 rupees so this is the final selling price now related to the actual data that we have so what is the actual data the actual data is the difference of the two selling prices right so he sells it at 18 rupees more than the previous selling price so the two selling prices should have a difference of 18 rupees but we have 6 rupees so if we have to scale it to 18 rupees we have to use a scaling factor of 3 so you have to multiply 3 to every possible value that we have assumed here once we do that then automatically all the data matches and whatever is required you can figure it out so in this question we are looking for the initial cost price so that is 100 into 3 or 300 rupees that is answer here so simple enough i believe this is a very easy way to solve these type of questions thank you so uh this is something which i have mentioned in our classes uh whenever you have this cheating kind of question uh, the easiest way to look at it is you calculate the sp by cp relation for each uh you know what to put it transaction or something for each uh, transaction or activity whatever is happening for each of them independently of others so uh we'll understand what i'm trying to mean here so independently of the others so for example if you look at this question if you have not read it just pause it and read it once uh, i'm just going through the important data once so uh there are two important things here one is that he claims to sell it at 90% of the cost price and another is uh 25% is not the other part because 25% is actually what he is making so this is the final value we are not you looking at the 25% we are looking for how many grams of wheat is he selling instead of a kg so he is selling some grams of wheat instead of a kg because of which he is generating that profit percentage so there are two parts to it one part is that 90% thing and another part is the cheating part so wherever he is selling something less than a kilo uh you know to get a overall profit instead of you know getting a loss because otherwise he would have had a loss right because he's selling at 10% less now uh just treat each of them to be independent of each other so first part if you uh so what i mean by independent of each other so had there been no no cheating involved so if there were no cheating involved the sp by cp would have been how much 90% so 9 by 10 simply so this is the first part so this is this is what would have happened the sp by cp if there was no cheating involved now for the second part ignore this 90% so forget about this 90% that he is reducing the price or not had there been only the cheating involved so if he would have only cheated or or <laughs> cheated uh, in this case i don't know <laughs> the exact word for that sorry so uh, had he been only cheating in this case uh, he would have sold something less than a kilo but he would have taken the price of 1 kilo right so please understand this relationship and this is the most important part from his shop 
there is that x amount leaving which we don't know what what we are looking for how many grams so let us say that is some x grams or uh, in this case i'm i'm considering x kilo so i'll get the answer in kilos and then i'll convert it to grams so let us assume that he is selling x kilos instead of 1 kilo so from his shop there is an x kilo amount of wheat leaving but he is taking the price of 1 kilo over it isn't it so over and above the x kilo he is creating a revenue of 1 kilo so the sp is of 1 kilo and the cp is of x kilo something like that right so sp should convert to this value or correspond to this value and cp should correspond to this value so sp by cp again if this would not have been there just think independently this would have been the sp cp ratio that's it so you have these two parts now all you have to do is just multiply to get the overall sp by cp so we know the overall sp by cp should be this thing 9 by 10 into 1 by x but the other thing which we have left out for the last bit is this 25% profit this is actually telling us what should be the actual sp by cp because he is making a profit of 25% implies what he is actually generating a 25% profit in the entire transaction so 25% profit is 1/4 uh, so the sp by cp correspondingly should be 5 by 4 so this should be equal to 5 by 4 so once you learn to get this thing this is a pretty fast approach uh, whichever part i mean uh, in some questions you would be given all of these and you need to find the overall percentage profit in some questions like this the overall percentage profit and some parts will be given you need to find the other part so whatever it is just independently find the sp by cp and you'll always get the answer so in this case you can simply resolve for x so that would be something like this which is 0.72 so 0.72 kilos or that is 720 grams so that is the answer for this question hope this was clear to all of you thank you <laughs> this is a very interesting question and uh, these are the questions where it might actually take you 3 4 minutes to solve even more if if you are not good with dealing with values and all uh, so let's go with this go ahead with this question i mean this is a very easy one if you understand some basic principles uh, these principles should be automatically coming to you uh, that is uh, so if you read this part discount of 34% so while reading you obviously understand you should be able to understand that that is giving me a relationship between sp and mp right the selling price and the mark price and uh, whenever the profit of 20% so that is giving me a relationship between the selling price and the cost price so these two percentages if you think about this this 34% and the 20% both are involving to some extent the selling price right so let us focus on the selling price so using this uh, 34% discount of 34% this data we should be able to understand that the selling price is 66% of the marked price because from marked price you reduce 34% to get the selling price so the marked price 66% should be the selling price similarly there's a profit of 20% so this selling price the same selling price here so profit of 20% the same selling price should also be 120% of the cost price so once you have this now i hope you can see this this gives us a relationship between mp and cp right so if you cross divide or something you get mp by cp as 120 by 66 right so in these cases uh, my recommendation is don't go into that just assume the values to be that much so what i'm going to do is i'm going to assume some values uh in case of cp and mp i'll start with i'll assume the cp to be this 66 and the mp to be this 120 so just taking the cross values that's all because of is multiplication right so if 66% of 120 should be as good as 120% of 66 right so we can take those as corresponding values so i'm considering the cp to be 66 and the mark price to be 120 now uh, for the selling price you can use either of the data uh, so you can use the profit of 20% or the discount of 34% i'm going to use profit of 20% that will be easier to calculate with so uh, from 66 to uh, you know 20% increase will result in that selling price 
So easy to calculate. Ten percent is six point six, or twenty percent should be thirteen point two. So just add thirteen point two, you get the initial selling price as seventy nine point two. So this is the initial set of data that we have assumed, which satisfies every relationship that is here. And this is for hundred articles. Now comes the interesting part. So it says that twenty of these articles are found faulty. And she repairs them at a cost of nine point zero nine percent. Now you should be uh, good with those uh, fractions and percentage equivalents. You should be knowing that nine point zero nine percent is equivalent to one by eleven. So uh, there's a one by eleven of the cost price of those twenty articles, which is which she is uh, incurring extra. Now um, if if it would have been on all of the articles so that would have been a 111th of the 66 bucks because that is the selling uh, cost price of the total 100 articles that we have assumed right so had there been uh, an excess of 9.09% or 111th on the entire set of articles there would have been an increase of 111th of 66 so that is 6 rupees whatever it is but this would have been if there was an increase in all the articles price so whatever faulty or something if all the articles are faulty but all the articles are not faulty right only 20% is faulty uh, 100 may say 20 so there is only 20% which is faulty so the increase in cost price is how much 20% of this because that is the part which is faulty right so this results to an increase in the cost price by 1. Two rupees. So this is the increase in the cost price, right? So this is one point two. So this cost price should increase by one point two. So this should be the increase part, right? Now you need to have still a profit of twenty percent. Now you know that if the cost price was sixty six and the selling price was seventy nine point two. Then that would already result to a twenty percent profit. So you don't not need to calculate for that part. You just need to add twenty percent of one point two to it. But look, just increase one point two rupees the extra cost by also twenty percent. Just increase that by twenty percent again. So one point two twenty percent is how much? Point two four. So simply increase this by point two four, and you get the Final selling price. I mean, I mean, this is uh, sorry. Uh, this should be increased over the one point two. So uh, just add another one point two to this. You can you can do one point two plus point two four straight away. So this is the one point two should also increase by twenty percent. That is what I meant. So this should be the total selling price, right? So the total selling price comes out to be how much according to this? So this is one point four four. You can simply add to that. So this is eighty point. Six four right. So this is the final selling price that we are dealing with. But the mark price has not changed. Mm -hmm. We are looking for what should be the new discount percentage. So if we are looking for what should be the new discount percentage, we have to take into consideration that the mark price should not change. So uh, the mark price is still one twenty rupees, and this is the new selling price. So we are looking for a a, a discount of what thirty nine point three six or something. Uh, In these cases, I hope you can do it in this way. One twenty minus eighty would have been forty, but that's a point six four less. So point three six is what we are left with. So thirty nine point three six is the discount value. Percentage should be calculated on the one twenty. So you can just simply calculate this. It will come out to be thirty two point eight percent. So that is the answer for this question. So I hope that was clear to all of you. Okay, a uh, very basic question related to compound interest. Uh, we have been given that uh, so this person is buying a new motorbike on loan for two years at twelve percent compound interest without paying any down payment, and uh, if the interest accrued in the second year was rupees this much, what was the cost of the motorbike? Uh, it is known that the loan's principal amount was equal to the cost of the motorbike. So basically, we are looking for the principal value. So uh, whatever was the uh, loan amount uh, that has uh, grown by twelve percent every year, and the interest accrued in the second year, not for two years. Please understand that this is the uh, interest accrued in the second year. Is this six zero 
four eight, right? I hope everybody is aware of successive percentage change. In these kind of cases, it is very easy to use that. So if you have a compounding thing, compound interest followed. So whatever is the principal amount that is growing by the rate percent that we have. So in this case, twelve percent. And then this amount is growing by twelve percent. So there's a successive change of twelve and twelve, right? So overall change will be given by twelve plus twelve plus twelve square by hundred. So you can calculate this. So that comes out to be twenty five point four four. But uh, one thing I can point this out to you. Uh, please understand what is this twelve twenty five point four four percent? What is this? This is the total interest for two years, right? So this is the interest. For two years, not for the second year. So this is the net interest that has been accrued over the principal amount for two years. But what is the interest for the first year? So for the first year, the interest is this twelve percent, right? So if you think about the interest for the second year, that is simply this part, isn't it? This twelve plus twelve square by hundred. You can also do it in this way. Interest for year one is twelve percent. So subtract these two. So effectively, you should be left with this part, right? So if you understand this idea, you don't have to calculate this entire bit. Just calculating twelve plus twelve square by hundred is giving you the interest for the second year. So for the interest of the second year is how much? Thirteen point four four percent. And we know that thirteen point four four percent of the principal is equal to the six zero four eight rupees. That is the interest for the second year. So simply calculate the principal using that. So you get forty-five thousand as the answer. So the answer to this question is forty-five thousand. So pretty simple if you understand this compounding idea and successive percentage change is fast in these kind of cases. So thank you. This one is also a very easy one. Uh, just that. Uh, don't over calculate try to avoid calculation uh, or over calculation as much as possible calculate always in one step it will be easier and more accurate also so for example in this question uh, first thing as in the previous question uh, we can relate to that as well so uh, we can use a successive percentage change because uh, if you have read the question if you are not read it just pause it and read it once uh, so if you have read the question then you will find that Both the initial investment of two lakh and two point five lakh is a tenure of two years, and uh, there's a compounding happening, compounded annually at ten percent per annum. So uh, you can use successive percentage change to quickly figure out that the interest for two years is ten uh, plus ten plus ten square by hundred, or uh, that is a twenty one percent rate of interest. So we are getting a twenty one percent return. Overall, for two years, on whatever investment that we have, right? So two lakhs and two point five lakhs, respectively. So uh, for Mayank and uh, for Ashwin, the first parts, that is, this two lakhs and two point five lakhs, we get a return of twenty one percent of the investment, whatever we have. So twenty one percent of two lakhs in this case, and twenty one percent of two point five lakhs for uh, the other guy, Ashwin. <laughs> Now, at the end of the first year, so the second part says at the end of the first year, Mayank opened another account of rupees one lakh for one year. So this is after the end of the first year. So he is gen generating a rate of interest for just one lakh. So the, what is that rate of interest? Only ten percent, right? This is simply for one lakh. So Mayank has an additional interest generated of this much. Ten percent of one lakh. So we're looking for how much less interest did Mayank earn on his two fixed deposits together than Ashwin did on his fixed deposit at the end of the two years. So uh, the question is indirectly telling us that Ashwin is more than Mayank. So we can what what are, what are we actually looking for? So we're looking for this amount minus this amount, right? So twenty one percent of two point five lakhs, the Ashwin's total interest minus. Twenty-one percent of two lakhs and ten percent of one lakh. Both of this will be subtracted, right? Now observe something. I mean, this is why I, I I recommended initially not to calculate in between. So if you look at these two parts, both has twenty-one percent here, right? And twenty-one percent of two point five lakhs minus twenty-one percent of two lakhs. This is easy, right? Twenty-one percent of point five lakhs. Now another thing that I'm observing is that this part. 
has 10% of 1 lakh now please understand off is basically multiplication isn't it in multiplication if i half one side and double the other side then nothing changes to the product right so what i'm doing is i'm making the base 0.5 lakh for this one also so if i do that i'm making this as 0.5 lakh instead of 1 lakh so i'm halving the right side so the left side has to be doubled so this would be 20% of 0.5 lakh so this things can be done mentally also if you are good good with it and if you practiced a bit so 21% of 0.5 lakh and 20% of 0.5 lakh see again the base becomes equal so all you have to calculate is 1% of 0.5 lakh is what 50000 so 1% of 50000 is 500 bucks so that is the difference in the total interest so that is answer here rupees 500 hope this was simple enough okay so in this one this is the only question that we have shared related to installment because this question itself should clarify that everything that you need to know uh, from cat and these exams perspective um just do one thing for any kind of installment related question now the rate of interest could be in terms of simple interest could be in terms of compound interest just adjust it accordingly um in 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 sense we just have to evaluate two things in these kind of questions i have discussed this in our classes also but this is an open thing so i'm just repeating this in short so just calculate two things here future value of the loan whatever is the loan amount and future value of all the installments just calculate these two things and equate it the two future values should be equal in order to pay off the loan right so if you are paying off the loan the total future value should be equated that's simple as that if it is not equal there is something left out so uh, there, there are cases in which question asks that uh, whatever is the amount due so whatever is the difference of this and this will be the amount due same thing so just calculate the future value in these cases so let's go ahead with the data here so this person is borrowing a sum of rupees 2 lakhs from a bank at 10 percent interest per annum for a period of two years he needed to repay the loan so we know few things here so there's a two lakh 10 percent interest per annum and a period of two years so we know these things here we don't know as of now whether it's a simple interest or compound interest uh, this uh, these things are indicated in different ways let's go at completing reading the question uh, he needed to repay the loan in two equal yearly installments so we're looking for yearly installments and two of them uh, to be paid at the end of the first and second years okay that's a pretty obvious if the interest was calculated at the end of the year on the principal outstanding during the year so principal outstanding during the year implies what that's a compound interest so we have to use the idea of compound interest in this case so let's do this uh, let's do that so uh, he has borrowed a loan of 2 lakhs right so if you have a 2 lakh amount and there's a 10 percent uh, interest generated on it for compounding so we are multiplying 1.1 twice to this right you can use that p into 1 plus r by 100 thing also it's the same thing it's using the multiplying factor so this is the future value of the loan amount right so 2 lakhs uh, l is indicating lakhs here so 2 lakhs into 1.1 square or uh, let me do something i mean anyhow we have to calculate this so instead of this i'll just write it in this way so 10 to the power 5 lakh has five zeros so this is the future value of the loan amount and what is the future value of all the installments now he's making two payments right at the end of year one and at the end of year two and whatever future value we are calculating we are calculating for end of the second year right these are both end of please remember that uh, he makes the both the payments at end of first year and second year so end of year one whatever let's say a amount he has made a payment of from end of year one to end of year two it will simply grow by 10 percent right so this will inflate by 1.1 times as simple as that and whatever year to end 
he has to make the same payment because it's an equal yearly installment. So if he has made an installment of A amount here, he has to make an A amount here also. So that A amount paid at the end of year two, that is not going to inflate at all. So this is going to be the equivalent value. So what is the total future value? So simply add these two numbers. So you have 1.1A and A. So that is equivalent to 2.1A. So this is the future value of all the installments just because he is repaying everything. So these two should be equal. So 2.1A should be equal to this entire bit. Calculate this whichever way you prefer to do that. You get uh, 115238 approximately. So that is the answer here. So in this case, the answer is option B. And calculation tricks can be used in this part. I'm not going deep into that. You can watch our YouTube channel also. There are a lot of tricks already discussed. So uh, this is the final question. I hope you enjoyed the session. And uh, I hope this question was also clear to you. In these kind of installment questions, this is the only trick uh, you can use for every question. So it's very easy. In case uh, this would have been a simple interest, just use idea of simple interest, right? So instead of uh, this 1.1 square, this would be 1.2 because if you generate 10% interest for two years, you're effectively generating a 20% interest overall, right? So the money is growing by 1.2 times. And uh, similarly, in this case, this value would be as good because it doesn't matter for one year, it will again be 10%, so 1.1 only. So this side would have been 2.1A, but this part would have been 1.2 instead of 1.1 square. That's it. So that's it for this question. Hope. Uh, everybody understood this. Thank you. And thank you for the session.